Tonight, they're tearing down our history. That is what some are saying about the removal of a Confederate statue from the center of a North Carolina town. Similar statues are coming down across the South, sparking new clashes and simmering racial tension. Ellie Reeve is out front. When they moved the statue of Fane from his perch, it was surreal. For a lot of people of color, it represents a very dark time in our history. They're tearing down our history, the true history. They say that it hurts maybe the black community's feelings. It hurts my feelings for them that they, that they were slaves and now their history's getting tore down. A statue of a Greek goddess carrying a dying Confederate soldier used to stand in the center of Salisbury. Locals call it fame. The 2020 BLM protest built pressure to move the statue, so Greg Lambeth created the Fame Preservation Group to stop it. He lost, but his group is still going. Americans are fighting over how the country's history is told, whether in public monuments or school textbooks. We wanted to know why some still feel so connected to Confederate history, so we asked Greg if we could come to a meeting. It's a tough subject to have an event and put a Confederate flag up because people that don't understand why we're doing it are quick to call us names. And we're not doing anything wrong. We love everybody. I don't want to tear history down. I want to add to it. Fame had become a public safety problem because people would show up at its feet when there was a racial incident in the news, like after the death of George Floyd. Anthony Smith was there. We were out there. The kids were chanting. Then confederates start to emerge on the other side of the street. They didn't want to see the monument vandalized or otherwise attacked. A gentleman who's apparently a white nationalist drove down here to join in with that group. Uh, he pulls out a gun, fires it. It's kind of like, okay, this keeps escalating. It was originally for police brutality, and then all of a sudden it just got focused on taking that down. A directly non-related issue, well, really. Well, why do you think it's not related? Because Monuments and memorials have nothing to do with individual actions of law enforcement. Do you understand the argument that the Black Lives Matter protesters would be making of why police brutality in a Confederate monument would be linked? Not really, given it's an inanimate object. Okay, well, I can explain it for you. The idea is that the state has used violence to, su to suppress Black people, prevent them from voting, using violence and intimidation to keep the population oppressed. Right. And so that's the connection. Fame was removed from downtown in July 2020 and placed in a Confederate cemetery a year later. After the BLM protests, Smith decided to run for city council. I see this fight for pronounced display of Confederate symbolism as them trying to create a sense of I'm a part of a story, and y'all trying to take my story away from me. Now the problem is that that story is problematic because a lot of that story has to do with the dehumanization of people that look like me. And that's the part that gets difficult to have a conversation about. Amen. Amen. I personally would like to hear everybody's opinion, no matter their background, whether it be African American or Asian, Hispanic. But Greg. Yes. There's no way I'm the first person who told you that some people see the Confederate monument as pro-slavery or pro-white supremacy. There's people out there that believe that. So well, you're just saying, well, well, if someone wants to come to me and tell me they're offended, I'll listen. But like, they've been saying it. They haven't came here. Have they ever came to you and said anything to well, you? Well, can't you read a paper? Well, yeah, I can read a paper, but I'm saying if somebody individually wants to speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. Why do you need to be spoken to individually? I mean, you saw, you were there when Black Lives Matter protesters were protesting it. Yes. You could have listened to them. To be fair, I didn't have a choice but to listen because they were chanting it. I've had a handful of people come up and whisper are you a Democrat? <laughs> really? <laughs> like, it's, like it's shameful. Salisbury's demographics are changing. More people of color, more people from urban areas. Alyssa Redmond bought her bookstore after 15 years in the Foreign Service. Salisbury is a fairly liberal town, but we are surrounded by a very conservative county. And I wanted to be in a place where my vote would matter, but also my voice. I can see 
maybe how it looks scary to them. Like, man, the world is not like it was. And some people are not taking it well. The local newspaper still gets letters from people who are upset that fame was moved. I see it as a cleansing movement. The movement that was created to take down one monument was to take down every monument, essentially to replace the existing culture with something entirely different. But you said there was a cleansing, and I'm wondering who is cleansing who? You're talking about the statues were being cleansed, weren't you? Well, not only statues, but just historical fact in general. I want to know who exactly is doing the replacing. Democrats. What do you mean? Angie. Angie. You think Democrats are replacing I'm white speaking voters? For them. I'm speaking for me right now because I see what you're doing and you're turning this on a nice fellow that's trying to do something good. Let me tell you what a cleansing is. Okay. A cleansing of our history, our nasty history mm -hmm. of slavery and shitty white people who did shitty things to black people. Okay? There's a cleansing okay. of that. And then history's being retold. Now, is that what you meant, Greg? No. Well, that's what I thought you meant. Well, I want to know what Greg thinks. And the reason I ask, and just to be transparent here, is you use the term cleansing and replacement. And those are both terms that I've seen a lot in the um, white power movement. So are you consciously referring to those things? No. I'm not saying that there's any racial cleansing being done. Okay. Because I don't believe that Confederate monuments represent something that's specifically driven by race. If any one member of our organization parked any notion of racial supremacy or domestic terrorism, I would nip that in the bud real quick. And Ellie's here with us now. It was a really fascinating conversation, Ellie. You always bring that. So this, of course, this monument, this statue was was moved. There are other statues like this still, you know, in other parts of the country. Is this is this a similar conversation happening? I mean, how is this conversation happening in other places? A lot of cities and towns are coming to a similar compromise with as Salisbury's. So that means moving the statue to a place with historical context, like a cemetery or a museum. Elsewhere has been acrimonious. There have been lawsuits to force one to move. There have been lawsuits to prevent one from being moved. And in Matthews, Virginia. The county is considering deeding the property that a statue is sitting on to a Confederate history group so that if public sentiment swings against the monument, the city can't do anything about it. The city gets to take their hands away from it. Yeah, basically, it's yeah. out of our hands. It's good to see you, Ellie. Thank you. Thank you.